Hi everyone, Doris Raymond here, getting ready to do another awesome video. And this time, once again, we have the great privilege and honor of being at Julian's auction here in Beverly Hills. Julian's is getting ready to have an auction on hundreds of Amy Winehouse's personal possessions and clothing and accessories. And we have the great pleasure and the luck of having Martin Nolan, the director of Julian's, in town to talk about this incredible collection. Absolutely, Doris. Always <laughs> wonderful to see you. You are always welcome in our gallery. Mm. You do an amazing production of these exhibitions that we put together. And I know that you have such a huge following and they really appreciate because of your knowledge. Well, it's not my knowledge, it's, it's joint. It, joint, but like you have great expertise and appreciation for fashion and for people's items and the influence, influences that they have on others and who influence them. And you know, it's interesting you would say that. That's exactly the reason why I wanted to come here and do this particular episode with you today. Um, I got hooked up to vintage clothing when I was very young because I felt it was a great way for me to express my personal um, personality. And um, I don't typically try to follow um, trends and you know, identify with other groups of people. I like to really put unusual things. And Amy Winehouse is the epitome of discovering her DNA and style. And you can see in this exhibition um, her evolution. It's, it's very exciting for me to be able to see these things and be up close and personal. So thank you for this opportunity. A pleasure. And Doris, I have to tell you, you are the first person that has got this sneak preview because Woo! we don't open until <laughs> next week Great. to the public. We're here every day next, starting on Monday, November 1st. The auction, of course, takes place next weekend, November 6th and 7th. And we invite everyone to come down, see this exhibition, be a part of the auction. It'll be a very historic auction with a portion of the proceeds going to benefit the Amy Winehouse Foundation. How wonderful for that. Which is so amazing because that foundation does so much work, good work helping people with uh, addictions, which is something obviously very important for Amy Winehouse, but also lots of good work for youths and with true music therapy and with housing for ladies that have been displaced from home because of whatever issues they're dealing with in their life and it's a, a refuge it's a safe house and that's something so important to amy so sadly we lost amy 10 years ago in july but we look around and you see first of all all of these amazing items cared for by her parents for the past 10 years and then you listen to her music and you just realize, wow, you know, she passed at 27. Unbelievable. But all that she accomplished in that very short window is incredible. And that's what we're it's sad, but we're also celebrating an amazing life. And Doris, you get the opportunity to be a part, the very first to see this. I, I'm holding back from my, you know, <laughs> from vibrating. I'm so excited. <laughs> and what I love about this particular auction that you've put on is we're going to really do what we can to get this up before the auction so that our audience will have an opportunity par to participate. You have things that you estimate going between 50 to $100. Mm -hmm. So this is not just an auction for people with deep pockets. Um, and th you've got everything from uh, musical equipment, uh, all kinds of musical equipment, to perfume bottles, to sunglasses, to shoes. So there's something here for everyone. There's ephemera. So we're going to cover some of it and, and actually watch the evolution of her style as well. Exactly. And, you know, on the price point, that was important to uh, her parents, Mitch and Janice, her mom, you know, because, you know, Amy appealed to everyone. It, mm -hmm. You know, she's Camden. She's an East London girl, you know, mm -hmm. like. And so all of these items represent her amazing life and career. And there are within range of most people that can afford you know a belt or ballet slippers or some of her perfumes or any of the items i mean really conservatively priced and you know when people come to the auction they're taking away a piece of amy they're owning some important part of our pop culture history and also benefiting a foundation that's continuing to good, do good work 
that was so important to Amy. Absolutely. You know, working with Janice and with Mitch, Amy's parents, you know, was an emotional journey um, for them and a, sort of a cathartic experience at the end when they let, let go, go and realizing yeah. that these items are going to go to fans, people that love Amy, but not only that, it's going to go to museums yeah. where her legacy will continue and people for years and years to come will be able to go to museums and see some of these iconic dresses, her fashion statements, something representing an amazing life and career. I, I should also mention uh, that much like um, the Janet Jackson catalog, the catalog for this particular auction uh, is really a journey through her life and if you're a fan of Amy Winehouse it's I would say worth it to get the catalog to have um, as a as a book to reflect on her and her life yeah it's a beautiful book you guys did an amazing job thank you well it was a, a truly a labor of love we love Amy her music what she represented it's been a pleasure to work with Amy's family her friends yeah. curating this whole entire auction knowing that you know it'll benefit her foundation and so mm -hmm. you know the catalog even if somebody can't afford something from the auction itself they could own the catalog because it's it's going to last forever right. and it's as you said it's an entire open book of her her life, her life yeah in the short 27 years yeah so we're going to start with kind of a chronology of amy's fashions um, I, I should mention that there's a ton of separate sportswear, activewear, also included. Um, most of them are fast fashion pieces early on in her career, and you can see that um, her choices changed around 2007 when she started to gain notoriety. But we're going to start with this beautiful Betsy Johnson dress. It's from 2004. So she was just about 20, I think, when she wore this. And she wore it for um, an appearance on a show on the BBC. Um, you can see even then she was quite petite. There is a showcase that highlights her eclectic taste in music uh, and things that influenced her style. So Frank Sinatra was a big, big, big part of her influence. And uh, you'll see Dinah Washington and a whole bunch of early musicians that her father introduced her to. Um, but what I find really interesting is her evolution. She stayed with tiki, tropical kind of prints, and also lingerie-inspired fashions pretty much throughout her life. In her late teens, early 20s, Amy wore as I mentioned earlier, fast fashion, but she also splurged, I guess, every now and then and bought Karen Millen. Uh, and she, Karen Millen is actually available here in the States, but her, her DNA was very pin-up, um, very bodycon. And so as she evolved, you can see she gravitated towards designers like Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, she had Jeremy Scott. Uh, and you'll see a lot of corset-inspired, either clothing or actual corsets that she wore, bustiers, halter tops, anything that would really show off her form. So um, I want to also mention, I had to write down, because she wore so many different designers. There was a time where she wore a lot of Fendi, and included in the Fendi was um, accessories as well. Matthew Williamson, Preen. She also had a, a stylist named Naomi Peary who designed numerous halter neck body con dresses that had a uh, topical feeling to it as well. So let's continue so you can see the garments. Moving right along, I will tell you this is a Betsy Johnson dress, but you can see that the three dresses on this platform are once again very body con and constructed really beautifully for clothing that's not um, terribly expensive. Uh, one of my favorite dresses actually is this one, which has the corset lace up in the front. Um, a lot of these pieces are gonna be on exhibit, so at the time of the sale, they won't be available to the buyer until afterwards, and they will be shipped from London, I believe, to whoever the buyer is. 
Um, I wanted to also mention, which I did early on, that a lot of her pieces are lingerie or lingerie inspired. So you'll see these three mannequins are, she's got a huge collection of bras. And these are robes matched with the bras. This accessory is actually one of the top pieces in this exhibition. It's estimated to go between 15 and 20,000, but I guarantee you it's gonna go for a lot more. This was the, it's leather and it's heart shaped, and she wore it for the 2007 Brit Awards. Uh, it is a purse that was designed for Amy by Moschino. And uh, this is also going to be exhibited at the Design Museum in London uh, through April 2022. So if you're in London, you might want to go check that exhibition out. This dress is a great example of the influence that Amy had on style. She would wear these bustier, these strapless dresses with bras that actually were exposed and typically with a contrasting color. Uh, the construction on this one is great and this one actually has a high estimate as well because it was used uh, on the cover of a magazine. One of the things that I find really touching is to see how deeply influenced the people of her East London area, Camden, uh, were while she was alive, but now, especially after her passing, to this very day. And these signs are tributes that were made after she passed away. And if you read some of the words that people wrote, the tributes, they're really touching. It's hard not to get emotional reading them. You really get a sense of Amy's personality and the things that she was drawn to for either for inspiration or just for life. Included in this auction are a collection of her books and also a collection of personal things like her teddy bear and things that were part of her home, her mirrors. Um, she has a large collection of Patricia Field prints, like the pillows that she did in collaboration with Keith Haring. But there's also clothing uh, that Patricia Fields made that I think probably a dozen pieces. And um, we've got a whole bunch of puzzles Many of these things are estimated, like the puzzles are estimated to go between one and two hundred dollars. And uh, there's 11 boxes, so like I said earlier, there's something for everyone. And uh, the dresses on this platform are very pin-up, but also very bodycon as well, so there's total consistency throughout this collection. This dress is really important. Uh, it has a low estimate. I think it's going to go for at least 10 times what they estimate, which is 20, I'm sorry, two to $3,000. I think it'll go more, closer to uh, 20,000 at least. It's uh, Wonders Never Cease. It's a dress designed by Hugo Boss. Surprise, surprise. And she wore this dress on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno in 2007 when she sang Rehab. So uh, I think this is a, a very important dress. If you have the good fortune of living in close proximity to Los Angeles, you really should come down to Julian's to preview this auction prior to the 6th. Um, there's a platform, and against the wall, kind of 90 degree angle, are mannequins with numerous items. On this wall, you have Pat Fields, uh, the two kind of 50s inspired strapless dresses. On the bottom row, there are these stretch dresses that were designed by Naomi Perry for Amy's final tour. Uh, and there's, they're pretty much all the same silhouette but with different materials. The top row, uh, that's Matthew Williamson. It's really heavily embellished with surface design. You probably recognize Pucci and uh, there's an assortment of other things on this wall, including more Pat Fields uh, Kitty Corner. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're all, some of them come with photographs of her wearing the garment, but they are all pieces that were kept and 
well taken care of by her family. This display is great because it is an eclectic mixture. It also shows her evolution where she's now at a place where she's wearing things by better known designers. I'm just going to point out this one uh, kind of slip dress. It's a gorgeous print, it's very subtle, and it's John Galliano. And it's from 2010, uh, so just prior to her, her last year. And um, yeah, it's typical of the styles that she's had. We can see also this platform. Uh, Mike pointed out, and I have to agree with him 100%, the third dress down is the construction is absolutely incredible, and it's, uh, I think, an anomaly in a way because it's Karen Mellon, and uh, the boning and the piping and piecing of this, uh, it clearly comes from someone who is a craftsperson, and it's, it's beautiful. It's in great condition. I'll say that everything that I've looked at is in great condition, which is unusual. So obviously these things have been well taken care of. When you think of Amy Winehouse, you think of her beehive hairstyle as well as her clothing style. And 2007 was a year that was huge for her because it was the beginning of her shooting up like a rocket in fame. This dress I love, it's Jeremy Scott. It is actually one of the few dresses that has uh, what I would call condition issues, but they're great issues because you can see her hand in either scrunching the um, cleavage area and also um, in closing off uh, seam in the very front. Um, I personally like things like that because it makes it, um, it's not new old stock. It has her uh, life invested in it. So the print on that is great. It's uh, footsteps to do a particular dance. And so, uh, Doris, you know, amazing to hear you as you walk around showcasing all of these amazing outfits and items representing Amy's career. And you talked about John Galliano, and there's Hermes, and there's Pucci, and there's Gucci, and there's Prada. But also, what's really nice about Amy is she was not afraid to wear young, upcoming, new designers. You know, you saw Arrogant Cat, for example, like just something just beginning. And so Amy was still able to go out there, be her own individual style mm -hmm. icon, and showcasing and giving new designers an opportunity. Because if you're beginning a new designer, and someone like Amy Winehouse is wearing one of your outfits. That's such a good point. It's, you it know, really that's brings you to the spotlight. Exactly, yeah. and so she wasn't in, not only in the spotlight herself, she was very happy to pull other people into the spotlight. In fact, we saw the dress there by Hugo Boss, mm -hmm. which she wore uh, with Jay Leno on The Tonight Show, which she sang Rehab, and looking at that video numerous times, you know, you see she's a, a little bit shy or almost like a little bit nervous, and like so her wardrobe and that beehive hairstyle oh were sort of like to camouflage that. You see her with the, your hands in the pockets or maybe holding the bottom of the, the dress, you know, clinging on to something to hold on to. So she was a real vulnerable, amazingly talented performer in every sense, and a true style icon. As I look up, I see an Adidas outfit right there taking top of the stage. You know, she a sports item that you said she could, you know, mix and match. and. She really had her own ideas as regards who she was and the image she was portraying, along with her friend Naomi Parry, who designed this dress, which was the last um, outfit that Amy wore in a, a live performance in Serbia during the summer tour of 2011. And sadly, very soon after this performance, we lost Amy. That, that particular performance was very hard to watch. It was hard. You yeah. could see the, you know, you know. Her struggling. Her struggles, yeah. exactly. And so it's a beautiful dress. You see the images of her here. Uh, again, something like this is one of the more higher priced items because it's so iconic and such a milestone, if you will. Um, estimated 15, I think, to 20,000. Yeah. As is the Moschino heart-shaped purse, which was custom made for Amy. And that's really an amazing piece. And we talk about the hearts. And so 
she loved hearts. Mm -hmm. And so this is the catalogue, and if you have an opportunity, if you can't come to the exhibition or the auction, you know, this amazing catalogue really showcases Amy's life and career. So we encourage people it's a to, beautiful book. you know, take, have this book. It's a coffee table book, a great conversation piece. And of course, Doris, if people can't be here in Beverly Hills next week, we're open all next week, free to the public, everyone is welcome. I'm noticing people going through the registrations. We, we are love seeing all the registrations coming in from Brazil and Chile and Argentina and all of Europe and North America and Japan and Russia and China. All of these registrations, people, that really tells you. 27 years of age she was, but yet she had a global audience. She made such a lasting impression, and now people want to be a part of this historic and auction. And it's great that you mentioned that. Um, for those people that are not familiar with online auction, uh, you can sign exactly. up, register, and actually bid remotely. Um, so you don't have to be here in Los Angeles. I'm one of the lucky ones, because I live just down the street. But uh, yeah, I, I have to say, um, I have been moved looking at these things and remembering um, such a young life that young was life. taken and um, how incredible that a portion of the sale is going towards um, charities that help people that are struggling with addiction. Exactly. So, um, so important for Amy and for Amy's family. And so it is a celebration of an amazing life, all that she accomplished in su such a short lifetime. Absolutely. And this is what this auction represents. So I think people are going to really love it. And if they can, they should really try and bid and take home so it's just a little momentum yeah. from her amazing life and career. Yeah, so thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to experience iconic materials from an iconic performer. We love when you come to our gallery Thank because you. we know your audience appreciates your knowledge and you can speak about these dresses and these outfits and her style much more eloquently than than certainly than I can. So we really are thankful to you as Thank well you. for giving audiences a chance to see an amazing exhibition. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, we read all of your comments. We don't have the time to respond to all of them, but we love communicating in that way to our audience. Um, we are trying our, our hardest to keep uh, every two weeks to post new episodes, so we appreciate your interest and uh, hope, that, uh, hope that you stuck around to this point. So thanks very much. See you next time. You know, and I just wanted to write music that was emotional and that people would want to listen to and yeah, connect yeah. with.